folks, it's Mark with Fire Mountain Outdoors. Hey, it was 1982 in October that the movie Rambo was released. I was 12 years old. And you know what? That spawned a whole generation of people that were fascinated, especially young 12-year-old boys like me, with the Rambo survival knife. I had to have one. And like many of you, that was on the top of my Christmas list. I wanted a Rambo knife. Well, I got one in 1982 in the winter, and I spent that winter whittling stuff with it and trying to sharpen it. You know, there was a, well, there was a wide, wide variety of, uh, of quality. This is like the one I got, and it's a giant piece of junk. But I saw this at a, at a thrift store the other day, and I paid way too much for it. I think I gave $10. It, it's really worth a dollar. But... Hey, come with me. We'll take a close-up look at this, and uh, you can revisit our 12-year-old youth together. You know, this is just like the very, very cheap, inexpensive uh, model that was available from mail order and your, your neighborhood sporting goods store. I drooled over this particular knife because it had so many awesome features. It has a saw built into the back and a can opener. What kind of knife has a can opener? None of them until this came out. Here was the best part, folks. Inside the cap, it was hollow. The cap itself was a very, very crappy compass that didn't work for, for anything. You could put north in any direction you wanted north to be and head that way. As you can see, east is towards the camera, and now east is towards my belly, and east is now over there. You could shake it up and maybe get it to work. It was sealed to make it waterproof. For the wonder that was inside, and this is why I actually bought it, so I could share it with you, because I don't know what kind of boy had this, because the, the goodness that was inside was still intact, and this has never been opened. This sealed bit of survival gear is still there and intact, and we're, gonna, we're just going to take this stuff out of here, and we're going to look at it. Just like we were 12, and it's Christmas, and we're all excited, and what kind of stuff is in here? The wire saw. You remember the wire saw? We're gonna demonstrate that. We've got a we've got a package of fish hooks that are wrapped up with some rubber bands. I don't think we're actually gonna go fishing, but that's a great thing to have for a boy. Is some fish hooks. We've got some needles. You know why you have needles? They're two very very large needles. Why? Of course, in case you injure yourself, you can sew yourself together. Or you could sew together leather or make your own holsters or whatever. There were some matches that are supposed to be waterproof. And this is what excited me, folks. All of this stuff was intact and I bought it just so I could share it with you. And uh, let's test out these uh, let's test out these matches. Let's see if they work. There's a little piece of striker sandpaper. As I recall, the matches didn't work for nothing. It's kind of damp out here. I'm gonna try and keep these dry. Let's try out one of Rambo's survival matches and see if it see if it lights. Well, that one kind of broke. Ho! Oh! These are actually better. Maybe they just needed 30 years of sitting inside a, a pommel, a, a handle of a knife. Look, I can make fire and stay warm and cook the venison that I killed with this very knife. Maybe a rabbit or Sasquatch or, or something. I'm just super excited that the, that the match actually fired. How cool is that, people? I better put it down before I burn myself. I didn't have to worry about that when I was 12 because the matches didn't work. Since those are good matches, I'm going to put them back inside here. And uh, we're going to assemble the wire saw and test it out. I'm really not going to cut myself to test out the needles and the sutures. What is missing is, I recall uh, some fishing line that was uh, that was supposed to be useful for sutures and or catching fish. I'm gonna have to stock this thing up. Now this this wire is, uh, is very, very stiff. We're gonna go find a tree limb and we're gonna set up and we're gonna, we're gonna try out this wire saw. As I recall, it didn't actually cut through anything. It's, uh, it's just uh, serrated a little bit. It's got little cuts inside the wire. I remember burning through 
rather than cutting a couple of limbs when I was a kid and, and actually wising up and being disgusted with this and discovering that it was just a piece of junk. One of the most memorable parts of the, uh, the 1982 El Cheapo Rambo knife was the genuine pleather. As you can see, this is, uh, this is some kind of a fabric colored vinyl. I, I'm really amazed that this has held up uh, this intact for this long. Oh, there's something in the bottom of this. Maybe he's got survival money in here. I don't know what's in there. Oh. Oh. Here, it's coming out, folks. Uh, maybe it's just a piece of plastic. This is probably what... Uh, this is probably the protective sheath for the knife. And uh, last but not least... Inside, oh, inside this, there was this wonderful sharpening stone. And uh, as I recall, it was most useful for cutting your fingers or your thumb as you tried to sharpen your knife with this little, with this little stone. And you could try it this way, and you would cut your thumbs this way, or you could try it this way, and you would cut your fingers or whatever. And uh, no matter how you tried, the cheap time on a steel never really did take a good edge. And if you got sort of an edge on it, it would, uh, it would dull rather quickly when you were using it for a machete or such. But uh, let's, uh, let's try and cut some stuff with this. So I found a stick right here, folks, that looks about just right. You know, one of the cool features that we have here is that this land that I'm standing on is the very land that I grew up on in 1982 when I was, when I was 12 years old, and I had my, my very own survival knife. And one of the features that, that this knife had that really appealed to me as a 12-year-old boy was the advertised fact that you could take off the cap and turn it into a spear. And it had this wire saw, and it had the saw on the back of the blade. And by golly, you could go out in the woods and you could cut stuff down. So we're gonna try that now. First, we're gonna, gonna set this uh, pleather sheath down over here. And uh, I've got this old chunk of cherry. I'm gonna try and cut this down with the saw on the back of the blade. Still cutting. I wouldn't say I'm cutting. I'm really just uh, expending a bunch of energy in a reciprocal motion, back and forth, 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 back and forth. Yeah, not so much. Hey, I think this is a great way for any 12-year-old boy to spend his summer. Way better in video games. Uh, we had them. It was the Atari 2600, as I remember. You remember Combat and uh, Pong and all those high-tech graphics that we had? Yeah. Well, in the uh, summer of uh, 83, I think I spent a lot of time. Probably not. I had a short attention span. I probably cut a lot of trees about that far. So that knife didn't work very well. For that saw, I got about a, a third of the way through. Let's, uh, let's try it as a machete. Now you'll notice I've wore gloves. Uh, I'm smarter now because I've got a few more years of experience behind me. Uh, that's my dog whining in the background. She wants me to throw a stick. It actually worked a little bit better. As a, as a machete, you know, if you had infinite amount of time, like boys in the summer do. Here, let me throw this for the dog. Go get it. And we can chop this off. What a great tool for a boy. Now. So I've got the wire, and we're going to cut through this, or we're going to attempt to. And as you can see, folks, 
it's really more of a burn. You see the smoke coming off of there? I remember this so much as a kid. Uh, revisiting the burn is, is really a great part of this. And uh, you can see that I have a, a two-piece wire cutter now. This, uh, this wire, Rambo wouldn't have made his first spear, but I've got Rambo strength. I think I got it enough to break it off. All right, well, let's whittle and make our spear now. <laughs> Look at that, folks. I done made a, a Rambo spear. I am ready to go get some feral hogs or uh, uh, communist enemies. Uh, the communists were the big enemy in the 80s. So it could have been uh, Red China or Russians, uh, you know, Red Dawn, that was kind of in the era. Our enemies all had to do with the communism back then. All right, folks. So I think I've got this stick whittled down. And we can see that the depth, about right there. Oh, yeah. That's a tight fit right there. This is going to be a wild pig killing machine. Uh, we don't have any wild pigs up here on Fire Mountain. But uh, there are some deer. Maybe I could get a deer or a raccoon. I've never ate a raccoon, but by golly, if I was Rambo and I had to, I could. And I'm equipped now. Let's go chuck this out there and see what happens. You know, uh, George here, he's the, he's really the stalwart custodian and uh, overlooker of the Fire Mountain Outdoors facility. But uh, he also doesn't move very fast and he makes a good target. And uh, if I was a 12 year old boy and I just made a spear and I was wandering around, uh, I'd have to throw it at George. So, uh, sorry, George, <laughs> it's your time to shine. So we're gonna throw a spear at George to see how it works. All right, so there's George and uh, he's, uh, he's standing all stalwart and uh, tight abbed, uh, ready for a hit. And uh, I've made my 12 year old spear. We're gonna see if we can make a stick in it, George. What do you say? Uh, I've never thrown a spear, ever. So, well, besides when I was 12, it's been a long time. All right, George. Oh! 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 oh, oh. oh. Let's see. We gotta see. We gotta see what happened to George here. Yeah, George. Uh, George took a hit. He took a hit and he, uh, that would have, that would have wounded him. That was, that, <laughs> sorry, George. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the spear actually did better than I thought it was going to do. And, and, uh, I aimed better than I thought I was going to do. And, and the stick we just cut did better than I thought it was going to do. And I'm all excited like I was a 12 year old kid in 1983 again. Yeah. Well, hey, I hope uh, I hope this was an enjoyable episode for you guys. Uh, I know that a lot of you out there had this very same knife and are excited to see it back in back in service. And uh, see if you can't find another one. Thanks for watching. Click on uh, the button up here and like us and subscribe and uh, put your comments in there. Tell us your story about the wonderful 1980 Cheezy's imported survival knife that you had. Thanks for watching.